Any, any questions? Okay, Chief Bill. <laughs> So, oh yeah, microphone's coming to you, okay. Enrique. Yes, thank you. Um, the presentation from South Africa, um, could you talk a little more about um, um, the, the issue of corruption? and how that is affecting the overall uh, production and, and processes in South Africa. Thank you. Mr. Anton, yeah. please. Okay. Um, if I can give the example of the coal mining industry, is that the licenses, how the licenses were handled by national government. It seems that the pals of the former president got the licenses. And then they mined the coal, which they delivered to Eskom, which is a parastatal, which provides most of the electricity in the country. And currently there are uh, big court cases going on and people are being charged. And well, we've recently, a month, um, just a month ago, selected a, a, a new president. And now it seems that his name is also coming up on, um, in these discussions or when the people are charged in court, they don't go down only by themselves. They bring all, everybody down together with them. So we, we it, it's unsettling to us at the moment. You, so I have a follow up to that. Are, are you, the companies don't want that either. I mean, they, they don't want no. to take the place. No. Are they stepping in and trying to provide, uh, encourage the government to have more stability and Transparency? Well, I think at the moment we don't know actually who are corrupt and who are it's not. But, yeah, you know, it's not beneficial to anybody but apart from the few uh, politicians. Yeah, well, when we think money. about livability in any situation, I mean, it's, this is kind of the most basic thing, right? We're, we're, yes. you're, you're talking about safety and security and, uh, yeah. Anyway, Enrique, you had a question, comment? I was curious by the, um, by the comment by Luana that you, you don't have problems in attracting people but retaining them. Can you, can you tell us where the mismatch is? You know, wh why do they come? You know, is, is that, you yeah. know, they, they come for jobs and they don't find the jobs or they come for a lifestyle? And that's a question for you, but I was curious in the other cases whether they have a similar, uh, is it a problem of, of attracting that you have? We heard these very ambitious figures of attracting people, but I'm curious to hear from, from the other ones as well, whether they, they have problems in attracting or also in, in re, re, retaining a little bit what you're trying to do. Like what the, what you call the sticky? Sticky, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so our research does tell us, Enrique, that people definitely come for a job. We do not have a problem with people finding jobs. We have very, very low unemployment in the Territory. Um, so they come, they get a job, they have a great time for about, you know, 12 months to two years and then the lifestyle um, isn't, doesn't stack up to the distance they are generally from their social networks and their families. Um, so we have a lot of people that stay for two years then start to have children, for example, and leave. Um, they want to be closer to that, that, those family networks and the support that you need around those, that time in your life. Um, and then for our older generation, um, a lot of the time they've been there all their lives, they, they don't want to leave, but the climate is a real challenge for them. The, the, the heat and the, um, it's really hard. And when you combine that with a combination of a lot of the, their children are moving away to have, um, uh, sorry, their children are moving away to have children or moving away to um, go to university, it's sort of creates a double whammy um, in terms of the, the, brain drain. the drain. Yeah, we have a brain drain and, a, and an older generation drain and for the social cohesion and also the economic activity within our um, jurisdiction, not having those older generations, we miss out on a lot in terms of the volunteer um, economy and the contribution that they make through all those kind of um, <coughs> volunteer roles that they would normally perform in, in other jurisdictions. So um, we can get them there. We're working on making them stick. Did anyone else have any comments about the... 
Well, we have um, about the same um, challenge. Uh, people that grow up here, they also go to university. Um, but I think that that's sort of part of an, a normal process. We need to be attractive for them to come back um, and want to to be a, a very safe and good place for, for families. Um, the challenge is that we, we share this um, challenge with 89% of the municipalities in Sweden. Uh, very many have the same challenge. So um, if all of us would grow, that would be um, a bit uh, problematic. Uh, but we can see also that there is a change um, in here. Uh, people are starting to move back. Um, and I think uh, when there are jobs, of course, we have also now a lack of competence. Uh, we, we have the jobs, but we, have, we need the right skills. Uh, we need more education um, alternatives. Uh, but above all, we need people, young people. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm going to talk about this in, in another session about the, the creative industry and the culture and the events yeah. and tourism and that is also what not only attracts visitors, that also attracts uh, citizens. Helena, yeah. he, um, I noticed that you mentioned that you're bringing people in from or inviting people in from other places too and you have other cultures that are moving in. Mm -hmm. that are not indigenous, let's say, to yeah. original, uh, originally have, from this area. Yeah. How is that working? And uh, We work quite closely with the people that move to Schleftu. They are welcomed with uh, both events and, and information. And uh, we set up um, uh, different meetings where they can meet local people. Um, also looking, at many people live in the city center, but we want to, them to understand uh, the beauty also of the whole municipality. Uh, so everything from boat trips to bus trips to locally produced farms. And, um, and the strategy is to bring both um, the people that live here to meet the people that have moved here. Because I think mm. it's exactly what you say. If you haven't really settled down and found a social network within a year, it's hard. Yeah. And especially also if you are a young family, you need this uh, social network because otherwise you wouldn't be able to work and, and yeah. survive with a lot of children yeah. <laughs> like I do. I have um, my family here, so I think it's... Yeah. Came back. Andres, important. did you have something you wanted? Yeah, I think uh, in, in Antofagasta it's an it's a issue uh, uh, trying to attract and retain uh, people um, families and the, the main incentive is still is the job opportunities it's, uh, it's um, good salaries and uh, the expectation to have a, um, a, high, a higher standard uh, of life but uh, um, there are no really significant or collective uh, effort to to make the the city more attractive to 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 other, not just for to to. I think that we have a, a gap in the in external image of the city, and most of the mining city in Chile. I don't know, you know, country. This city is beautiful, <laughs> uh, uh, but in in Chile. Uh, the, the the image of the city is quite the, the image of the mining city is quite low. Hmm? Most of the the city where uh, 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 which is better for work or uh, it's uh, it's not recognized as a good place for living. Um, and and I think uh, it, that that is an opportunity because I think and we believe we strongly believe that Antofagasta has. Uh, very positive attribute to be enhanced to 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 do more work with the different sector and to uh, to improve the image of the city. Um, the in, in within the region we have one of the major spot a uh, touristic spot in 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 South America and probably in the world. Uh, the, the Atacama Desert uh, uh, has a. a 
a lot of uh, visitants, but they go directly to the Atacama Desert. So the mm. challenge is how to uh, attract the, that people for other purpose in, in, uh, in Antofagasta. That is the issue. Why we are focused on waterfront? Because oh. waterfront has a, mm. uh, it's, the, it's one of the big opportunity and how to, uh, to, to enhance that the first, uh, as the first act, uh, uh, strategy uh, to, to, to enhance the, the, the positive attribute of the city. Are you adding incentives and in, as well? Are there? I mean, you're creating the infrastructure or the, the spirit of it, but are you creating any incentives to draw? No. And keep okay. Not really. Not really. I think the we are trying to the uh, our organization is trying to accelerate the the design process of the big project. Mm -hmm. uh, one mm -hmm. of the key, uh, big issue in Antofagasta but in 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 every city in every region uh, of the Chilean region. We spend too much time in to de uh, delivering a uh, big project. Uh, big project that we are doing is spend uh, in this, uh, we, we can spend probably 12 years. And, but the big gap is within the design process. And this is our, uh, uh, where we are adding value uh, trying to reduce the the, the time to oh. to deliver mm -hmm. uh, the design process. Oh, um, I I would like to ask also a question to you because um, in Sweden at least we've been fighting a bit of stereotypes of the north, mm -hmm. um, and I think that we are still fighting those stereotypes. It's sometimes easier to make someone from Spain or Italy or wherever, uh, South Africa, move to, to the north of Sweden than it is to make someone from Stockholm who has no other connections move to north, the huh. northern parts because of the stereotypes that have been produced and reproduced over so many years. And I think in that way it's really important that we um, sort of um, make sure that the image of our region is current with how the region is mm. because those stereotypes are based on, on how things used to be a long time ago. But today we can see a completely different type of region that we live in. And I don't know if you mm. recognize this yeah. challenge. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I would, I would say that uh, most Canadians don't they have an image of the north that is very pristine and vast, and they think of ice snow, and polar bears, <laughs> yeah. ice yeah. and snow, and so this, the image of the north is mm. not necessarily um, aligned with the actual the reality. Yeah. But there is a stereotype of what yeah. the north is, and often when people go there, they realize, oh, it's amazing, and they fall in love with it. But there is that sort of long-term retention issue, similar, I mean, very similar to issues I think in Darwin in the sense of there's a north-south pull mm. um, around family connections, but also services. So there's limited health services, there's limited education services. Mm. So at some point in people's lives, they often end up moving to southern Canada in order to access services. And there's also the family connections and, mm. and things like that, for sure. So stereotypes, as I mentioned in my presentation, have been a, a real challenge for us in the Northern Territory. Um, and it is that, that same um, occurrence of predominantly with Australians rather than um, people from international jurisdictions. We have lots of um, people that come from overseas and fall in love and stay. Mm. Um, so I, our sort of approach has been through um, a bit by stealth and a, and a bit um, sort of in your face. So we have a, a master brand that's really around dispelling the, the myths about what the territory is and what our makeup is now. So it's really trying to portray that modern life, the, you know, ter telling the territory story, the modern, modern experience that you have in the Northern Territory. And that is centred around Darwin, but there are, um, we have a campaign called Our Life Out Here and there are regional stories where people, it's um, on social media, so people are actually interviewed and they talk about their life in the region and you know, what a typical day is in the life mm. of the region. But we've also been doing a, thing, a few things by stealth in terms of um, social media influences. Mm. So through our tourism work, but also um, through a number of these programs, we're actually trying to dispel those myths through the way we use social media um, to, to spread our story. And um, we also have a program around expats. 
So people that are, you know, really... The, the Territory for me is a place like... Uh, it's like the Pacific Island is, islands are to Australians. When you go, you never really... It's always in your heart. You, mm. you, you know, it's always part of who you are. And so those expat, expats are actually really, really good ambassadors for the Northern Territory and our regions especially um, because they can give you a real picture and real story. So um, that's sort of the... Um, that social media is, um, especially for the type of, uh, we're looking at attracting young women that are going to bring yeah. their families and their, their networks, it's, uh, it's been really effective for us. Mm -hmm. I, I like the <clears throat> everyone has used uh, research in there. I mean, that's, you're very, you're, you're clearly driving a lot of the decisions and the planning that you're doing is based on research, which is obviously is key. Yeah. yeah. Do we have any more questions from the audience? Oh. Back in the back. Karen, was that right? Yeah. I think she's bringing a mic to you. So it was mostly a question to Shelefto about the skills. You had a tremendous, nice strategy uh, presented. What have you done when it comes to new types of skills development? You get new types of jobs and uh, also education, cooperation with the university, with the business of mining around these yeah. things? Um, well, we have a campus in Shilefte as well, so two universities are, are present, both from Luleå and Umeå. Um, and of course we work together with the universities to create um, educations that are uh, both interesting for the university um, and for the business um, businesses around, um, but we also together with um, uh, together with the business community created a new education where uh, we increase the attractiveness of technique uh, related um, upper secondary education. Uh, because we had a very low rate of, of um, applicants to these types of education. It, it has been a good start. Uh, we reached a higher amount of people or students uh, who apply for those types of um, educational uh, possibilities. Um, but I, I would say that it takes time uh, and there are traditions. I've been working in the university sector for 10 years um, and it's not easy uh, either to change uh, and come up with new types of education. So it takes time. And we have a lack of teachers, we have a lack of nurses, we have a lack of engineers um, in various types of engineers. Um, so there is a whole range of, of um, uh, competence that is needed. Uh, and now also if when the Northwald factory comes, it is two and a half thousand jobs, um, um, often in operational um, types of, of uh, jobs. Um, and then, since the families are moving in, we will need more um, childcare and schools and uh, also um, health. Uh, so we will keep on working on it, but I, think, I don't think it's a quick fix, uh, but we have to work together. And I think in one sense, it's good to have this very concrete project. It's like, um, um, it's like a positive crisis. Everybody comes together and they are focused on, on meeting the challenges when you have such a concrete mm -hmm. factory that is being built. Uh, which makes it much easier to come up with uh, non-traditional agreements and corporations mm. in the region. I was interested in the, the two universities that were mentioned. They, I think they cited 50,000 students mm. in the region. Yeah, that As, counts both Umeå and Luleå and also okay. uh, we have an agriculture university oh, okay. in Umeå. Has that, does that... Uh, I mean, you mentioned that you have the same problem with other places in terms of the brain drain and that sort mm -hmm. of thing, but I mean, it seems like you, with the universities, you would have less mm -hmm. of a problem now, or is that? Um, we can see that about 75% of the 
um, young people that grow up here, they choose to stay at a university in North Sweden, which means also in Östersund, which is it's further south. Mm. Uh, but they don't always find jobs. Mm. Um, uh, so I think we also need to to portray the jobs that you can find here. Sometimes we're not really good at portraying all the job opportunities that we have. Um, in in right. mid-sized communities, I think sometimes jobs are, uh, are it's sort of settled in your social communities. Yeah. <laughs> so we have yeah. to open up uh, and make, make sure that we show all the jobs. There's uh, other questions, but I think Andre said it. So uh, do you have any um, uh, incentive in relation with housing as well? But I, I think housing is a key issue also in, in retaining or attracting people. Uh, in Antofagasta, it's a huge issue. Uh, we, uh, mig migration has increased a lot. We have uh, uh, in the last uh, uh, four years. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but the condition and the prices mm -hmm. of the housing uh, prevent them to them right. to stay in, in the city. And, they, uh, 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 and, and the informal market has appeared uh, uh, around the, the hills. Mm -hmm. yeah? So, it's, and it's, uh, it's now uh, a traditional slum. It's now, uh, it's, uh, it's just a, 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 it's, I think it's a, it, it's a strategy of location for the, uh, the people who don't uh, meet their the needs uh, within the city. Uh, and, uh, and I think, and, 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 the, and the issue here in, in Atofagasta, we have land, we have a lot of land, we have a lot of public land, and we have no really uh, the, the capacity to join effort and to, um, to deliver uh, and, and to avoid the concentration. But the, the prices is about a, it's a matter of concentration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's actually a universal, pretty much. I mean, it's becoming a crisis, honestly. Yeah. The prices, I mean, if you have the, the yeah. One of the challenges around housing that we've experienced is definitely we have an abundance of land, but it's actually the lag between the time that the decision's made to release the land and then it moves into the approvals processes from a planning perspective to the construction to the actual housing then being available for use. So often the decision's taken, but it's taken too late. Um, and the, the long lags at some kinds, and uh, yeah. they vary but across jurisdictions, but um, in our situation in Darwin, we um, released, the government released a lot of land at a time where we were sort of heading up into a boom, and um, so we had a massive construction boom, which meant that the other infrastructure that government was trying to build because of the lack of available contractors also went up in price for us to be able mm -hmm. to deliver that infrastructure. So we sort of flooded the market in the end. Um, it wasn't the intent we were <laughs> trying to have, but it led to massive oversupply in the end that wasn't actually ready at the point when um, it when was needed. needed. It. So uh, it's real cha I find housing is a real challenge, even mm. when you've got the land, um, getting it to market in a timely yeah. fashion to be able to meet the demand is really, really hard. Also, Did you want uh, If you have another question, if you could raise, okay, we'll get to that next. Okay. In, in South Africa, ownership is quite a thing. Everybody wants to own a house, own a piece of land. So what happens, the mining companies provide housing, and then later on they transfer the ownership to the mine workers. But the challenge comes when the mine closes down. Now you sit with a house, nobody wants to buy it from you. You've got to pay land taxes, you're losing your job. So uh, it happened mm. uh, like that on the gold mines. Mm. That mm. was quite a challenge to yeah. the people I think there. The, uh, there. There is some distortion with the uh, with the, the the people who live around mining companies. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, particular in a larger city like Antofagasta, you know, or, uh, uh, where most of the people don't work within a mining company or or. or they, they work in related, uh, probably most of the economic activity, they rely on, on, on mining at the end of the day. But, um, but if you, they have an incentive, 
and then most of the company has incentive you know, on housing and so on. And uh, it's the distortion become higher. The distortion become uh, uh, higher because uh, they can pay. They can pay for more uh, uh, um, housing to retain to men. So the, okay. it's very impressive. Uh, and, and there is a, a lot of uh, now when the, the the economic activity is going down, there is a lot of availability. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and Part of the curse. Yeah. I mean, that's an indicator. So I have a question to Tulan and Helen. So I'm cut back to the image and uh, how you are marketing your city of or, and your region outside your 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 city or region in in your countries. So Luan told about the social media role and then young young women to go on. But have you uh, special campaigns? outside your, your region. For example, in Finland, I had two cases. Uh, I, I less, um, uh, last uh, week, it was city of Oulu. They went to the city of Helsinki in a center and a shopping mall, tell about uh, the image and, and the city of Oulu. And, and for example, the Uusi Kaupunki in, in the automotive, Mercedes automotive industries, they are, uh, went out to the whole Finland to tell up the, the workplaces they have there. Have you had special campaigns and uh, in Sweden or in, in Australia or outside your countries? Um, yes, we're, we're currently working on different types of campaigns, but maybe the most two examples would be when we go to Stockholm. Uh, we went to, uh, together with Piteå, which is also a good cooperation, that we are two municipalities that have the same challenge. And we team up with our two municipalities and we team up also with our businesses. So we go to both universities and then we invite our sort of um, our, our group of people who have moved away, uh, the young people who have moved away, and we have a, you know, an event that they are invited to. Uh, but I think it's very important to cooperate on this uh, because we have... And also another example is when we went to London to attract teachers. Mm -hmm. um, and we... Uh, don't have any networks <laughs> in London. Uh, but we uh, invited a lot of teachers um, to come and move to uh, Shalefto, and we went to the embassy uh, and had a meeting. Um, and it also worked on, on social media to attract the teachers. And actually seven families moved here afterwards, so in six months' time they were employed. Um, and probably we could go again and attract even more uh, teachers. Um, also due to, to an unstable um, situation there, which is unfortunate, of course. Uh, but they are looking exactly for the values that they find here. Um, good equality and a good social network and a good environment to teach in. So I think it has to be really, and when we go to Stockholm, we're really target focused. We don't invite everybody. We make sure that the scene where we are is uh, attracted to, to child families, to families. We make sure that the invitations are attractive. We make sure that all our communication is related to this target group. We've done it also in, in other types of events uh, where we can see that people are coming, but it's not the right people that come. So I think that, again, the, the strategy is not um, what to do, but how to do it. Um, and we've also had other... We send a, a Christmas card, which is a very simple way to, to all people that have moved from Shalefto. Um, and if they... Um, sign up, they can have a Schlefter hat or wherever. And um, even before we release the Christmas card, people sign up. So they make sure that they are online to find this um, uh, well, web page. And over 800,000 people sign up to, to get um, what they uh, want. And, and also they uh, make sure to, to keep those Christmas cards. So I think it's just making sure that you communicate with your heart and making sure that you do it in a good way um, is the strategy. Glenn, did you have something you wanted to Okay. Do we have any more questions? I think we're getting close to wrapping up. We have one. Oh, I'm sorry. I did. 
Well, while the microphone's getting to you, I just want to mention after we uh, end this session, we're all, we're all instructed to gather out in the parking lot. We're going to get a group uh, family picture. <laughs> <laughs> I have a quick question, but not an easy one, because, you know, in Europe, uh, well, it's a very difficult and political issue, but, you know, in Europe we are facing these problems of immigration from extra EU people, refugees, and these things. And uh, I'm from Italy, so um, we are one of the first countries uh, which, let's say, are trying to, f to solve this, well, solve in, uh, mm -hmm. this problem. But uh, do you think this uh, pro um, question of refugees and, uh, let's say, immigrants can be an opportunity for the, the region or not really? I mean, you're, you were saying that you are targeting specific kind of people to attract them. And how, what's your position in front of this kind of problem? Directed to, to I think, Helena. Yeah. Um, Strelifte has a long tradition of, of uh, taking care of immigrants in a very good way. Um, I think that Germany has been here uh, also uh, to, to look at how we do it. Uh, um, and I think it is a value, valuable group to us. Um, and I think it's really important that you work with um, how you plan your um, housing and many in many different ways. But they are an important group. And actually now we're looking at a, a pre-study uh, related to this um, Northvolt uh, battery factory where we try to find uh, the competence in this particular group. In Sweden, in whole, in the whole, uh, in whole Sweden, not only in Skellefteå, to make sure that we don't miss out on the competence that is hidden uh, in this uh, group of people, um, because sometimes um, there are bureaucratic restrictions that makes it uh, harder to um, to make people with the right education get the, the right types of jobs. Uh, but I, I would say that it's, a, it's an important group and you can really take care of um, the uh, possibilities within this group. But you have to have sort of a holistic uh, strategy to, to do that. And, and they're being interviewed, you're monitoring the, those groups and in, you know, uh, continuing to gather data on how it's going um, for them? The strategy has mostly been focused on... Um, and some common afflicting bomb, what's that? Uh, the, the children that comes mm. on mm. their own. Mm. Um, but the whole group, I think that we have a lot to learn yeah. and a lot more yeah. to do. But um, at least we also have an expert network yeah. <laughs> in, in Skellefteå that is very uh, active. And I think those types of networks need to be set um, mm. in maybe a more... Uh, ordered manner to make sure that we don't miss out on, on the competence. Yeah, yeah, great. I won't comment on national migration policy in Australia, but in terms of um, what we do, we um, Australia does accept refugees, and the Northern Territory has actually been actively putting its hand up um, in a couple of our key centres. So some of our more remote locations, there we have assessed the the lack of services and support probably wouldn't be appropriate to help and support refugees as they came into those communities. But certainly in Alice Springs and in Darwin especially, we have a very multicultural makeup and it's a very welcoming. So we've been putting our hand up for a bigger, a bigger share of the national um, refugees that are accepted each year into Australia because we really do think we've got the appropriate networks and wraparound social services and support to assist them to make a great new life. That's great. So we're at the end of our session, but I thought maybe we could go do a little round robin and if you have any other comments about livability and, and the general topic. Of course, OECD is considering or continuing to, uh, you're, you're all involved with their various different levels of research and work that they're doing to support uh, in, uh, uh, better and more um, sustainable regions. So. Andres, would you like to start? With, do you have any comments? You wrap up with comments? I think there are many issues here that we can learn, uh, particularly with migration. We are new in that uh, issue. I think, uh, and uh, I agree that multicultural uh, cities become more attractive 
uh, most of the the better city in the world are multicultural. Or, uh, um, and we are um, just focus on uh, on the threat and the, the on the problem and how to receive and um, and how to combine to be welcoming uh, at the same time, but uh, also try to uh, attract the, the capacity that you need. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and another thing I think is important is how to retain um, the different group uh, within the society. Um, how to avoid uh, the horizontal inequality mm -hmm. within the uh, mining uh, context and I think uh, uh, how to deal with the aging people in a, in a, in higher cost uh, like cost of life uh, with high prices on housing um, we have a, a lot of people aging people going to the center uh, the central part of the Chile because they can afford to live in a, in, uh, in Antofagasta even if they want so uh, and uh, uh, that, uh, that's uh, it is. And, and, and the, 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 the provision of public space, the public domain, uh, with equal access to all, I think is a key issue to, to retain and attract family. Uh, mm -hmm. That is uh, how to, the, the different mm -hmm. uh, uh, sector can be attracted by uh, the, the, our territory. So my reflection would be that I think what we've done well is focus on what I would see as the economic or the hard attributes, so infrastructure and jobs, um, getting those things right. But what And that, that gets people to come, but in order to get people to stay, it's really around looking at the the depth of your society and the depth of the experiences and environment for us. So. Um, access to cultural activities, the creative industries, the festivals, they're the things that really enrich in the experience and make people want to put down roots for us. Um, we did a piece of research looking at spouses, whether they were male or female, um, the second, sort of the second income earner in a sense. So you've got traditionally a breadwinner and a, a second income. So we looked at the spread of what those people were looking for in terms of their skills and experience and um, also looked at the different types of things. Um, really interesting example that I'll never forget that came up in that research. We have a, a chain store in Australia called Maya. And mm. one of the things that we identified that was missing to get people to stay was a Maya. <laughs> because it was what a lot of um, people wanted, you know, they wanted access to that. And um, fortunately for us, e-commerce occurred and um, so that retail um, business model has changed. So whilst Maya said yes, they never actually ended up. But um, I suppose my message is don't underestimate the importance of the um, non-economic attributes of your yeah. society mm -hmm. because to me that's really... Um, that's the sticky part. That's the sticky part. Mali? Yeah, in South Africa, we see if the livability of the mining town is low, only the breadwinner will migrate. So if you can increase the livability, the whole family may perhaps follow. Um, yeah, I think we have a great livability. We just need to release the inner pride of, of the people that live in a, a region, making sure if we are pr proud of what, where we live, I think that will attract other people because you will talk about your region in a, in a good way. But also that you cooperate uh, together with universities and together with businesses as a municipality, just break the boundaries between the different um, organizations. And thirdly, uh, break the stereotypes, um, do things differently, uh, make sure that you fight for your ideals and the inner core of, of what is the best of a, a region. I think that's important. Breaking outside those silos is definitely a theme uh, along everybody's area. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Paula? I would just say that there's lots of opportunities in Canada's north and one of the key challenges that all levels of government are focused on is trying to ensure that the education skills level of the local indigenous population is, is raised up because um, that's really key to ensuring that the territories can thrive and be part of all the opportunities that are there. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Um, I think we are over. 
Not sure what we're, when we were supposed to end, yeah. but I think this is it.